Welcome to Pearl World Live. I'm Danielle from Pearl World. Kate behind the camera. And we are here today. We're going to show you some Caesar brick vinyl. I have two different projects for us to work on, um, showcasing the brick, how it looks, and then mixing it with some easy weed, just so you can kind of see the difference. If you haven't used brick vinyl yet, um, it's not a new product. It definitely is something that Caesar has had for a while, but it really does offer that kind of unique look for a vinyl that you might be looking for. It kind of stands off the shirt and gives a nice three-dimensional look. So definitely stay, stay, uh, stay tuned in with us and we'll show you all those projects. And like always, let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear from you. And if you've used Brick Vinyl before in the past or if you're kind of waiting to use it and excited to try, uh, let us know and uh, we'll be sure to give you a shout out. All right. So the very first thing about brick vinyl is it's not flat. It's not thin. It is thick. It's really ideal for like your smaller sort of accent points or hats, really something that's going to kind of allow that text or that image or graphic to kind of stand out for you. So keep that in mind when using brick vinyl. It's not ideal to do a, a large kind of graphic on your shirt because that will make the shirt a bit stiff and kind of thick feeling. So definitely consider how you use brick and, and kind of using it within that accent or smaller designs or spaces where the shirt can kind of show through. So we have two designs that are going to showcase that for you today. And before I kind of hop right in, Kate, do we have any any messages? Uh, we have Diane, Tanya, Sam, Charles, Trish tuning in. All right. Hello, everybody. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to weed the vinyl. And I've already cut this. I used the cut settings on my Silhouette Cameo as um, I basically 8, 8, and 8. So I did a blade 8, a depth 8, and a speed 8. So, but my, my blade is a little dull. So, uh, but you'll definitely want to check the settings on on the, the website that we have to make sure your cut settings are accurate. So I cut this and it's gonna be a mirror print and then you're just gonna kind of weed away all the excess. And you can just kind of see it just sort of rolls off. And since it is a little bit thicker, it, it's just slightly harder to peel off, but not tremendously difficult. It is a static carrier sheet, so it's not sticky at all. So that's something to keep in mind too for your designs. And then you're just gonna kind of remove all the extra space that you might have here. And if you find it kind of harder to weed or it's just not releasing, you can always put this underneath the heat press to sort of help release it more. The heat does help that area. Let me see if I can get these little parts within the fork to stay down. There we go. I have a little fork to use on the side here. A fun scrap project. <laughs> right? <laughs> you have these wonderful little circles and squares here. Okay. If parts come up like that, like you just saw there, it's all right. Once we heat it and get it on the heat press, it'll be fine. All right. Kate, anybody else? Has anybody used brick? Any, any comments coming through? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I know this is probably the most um, boring part to look at is, is the weeding, but real time, th this is what happens. <laughs> this is what you have to do for vinyl. Okay. Almost. And then I'm just gonna pop out these areas. Okay, so this particular design we're just gonna do with the brick vinyl. So it's just gonna be all solid brick and we're gonna go on this t-shirt. And I have my, uh, this is the MP999 heat press. It has a slide out drawer. 
And it's very similar to our standard um, Trans Pro 15 by 15, but it includes that side of that drawer. So you have your time and temperature readout, your digital, and then uh, your uh, lower platen slide. So I'm just gonna kind of pre-press it to get all the moisture out. And then I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and place the design on the garment where it should go. If you fold it in half like this and kind of crease it, that gives you your halfway point and sort of line that up. And I'm going to trim this down because it, it's making me unsure if I have it straight or not. There we go. That's a little bit better. You should be at a medium to heavy pressure for this vinyl. And that looks about good to me. Slide it in, cover with your nonstick sheet. And we're just gonna press this for just a little bit. I feel like my nonstick sheet just moved my design. There we go. Okay, slide it in, close and lock. Just a few seconds, just to tack it down. And then, oh, this is a cold peel. I always forget. <laughs> so don't peel. What pressure were you at? I was at a medium to heavy pressure. Once you tack it down for a few seconds, go ahead and flip it over. Place it back down. And then we're just gonna press the backside for a few seconds. And then once you have that, for a little bit longer, we're gonna open it up, flip it back over, let it kinda cool down for you so you can peel off that carrier sheet. Let me move my scraps over so you guys can see it here. I'm just pressing on the back. So pressing on the back allows the brick vinyl to go into your bottom pad and sort of get that heat from the bottom as well and then heat from the back side. So both sides are pretty much heated then, which allows the vinyl to really stick on your shirt for you. And since brick vinyl is a bit thicker, that is ideal for, for this type of vinyl. I don't usually press on the back side for any other vinyl but this one. Okay, it seems cool enough as you start to, or not. Nope. Not cool enough. I actually am gonna, let me just increase my pressure a little bit more because it should have stuck a little bit more than that. Okay, couple more seconds. And it might not have tacked it down enough on the front side. I'm not, I'm not gonna use a sheet for this one. I feel like that didn't, that didn't help me the last time. We're going to tack it down for a little bit longer just to make sure. It was kind of peeling up a little bit in the corner, so I don't want to peel off my design and, and have the brick come with it. Or peel off my carrier sheet. Okay, that should do it. Now I'm going to sit and wait and not peel it like I really want to. But it's cold peel, so you got to wait. The brick is uh, for garments, fabrics. Yes. So it can go, it can go on anything. It's really great, like I said, for hats. You can do garments, you can do tote bags, any sort of thing that you sort of want that dimensional look, it would be great for that. And even though I was like really concerned about, I, I definitely, this is crooked. <laughs> but that's all right. Okay, let's see if that'll, let's see if that's good now. There we go. And just peel it away. Perfect. All right. And let's see, maybe I can get, is that straight on there? You can probably see that trying to get you guys the dimensions here, but not too much. Um, maybe the front camera. If 
you guys can see. Maybe, I don't know how, I, how, how else I can kind of show you this dimension. But it definitely, if you're looking at, if you like rub your fingers over it, you feel it. It's definitely one of those vinyls that stick up. I don't know how far it sticks up, but there you go. We'll kind of zoom in and sort of turn either way for you. Maybe if, if you want to zoom in on that one camera there. Down. Just a little bit. You can kind of see some dimension. There you go. Well, what we're going to do now, we're going to kind of combine two different types of vinyl so you can, um, maybe the different types of vinyl will help see the difference. Okay. So that's, that's just brick alone. So now basically with any of Caesar's vinyl, you can combine you know, the different vinyl types together just by putting it underneath. So we're gonna do easy weed underneath with some brick on top. So first I have to weed away the easy weed. That's a fun color, what color is that? This is lime. And it is a fun color. It's very bright. We're gonna do lime easy weed underneath, and then we're gonna do a layer of just brick on one of the words, just to emphasize it. And if you haven't um, realized the theme today is soccer. <laughs> so hey, it's soccer season. It is soccer season. So that's what both of these designs are showcasing, but they can be used for really any sport. This one just says eat, sleep, soccer, repeat. So swap out soccer and you have a whole nother sport. <laughs> okay. All right, any questions or any, anybody else while I'm weeding? Uh, no. Uh Mr. D. Woods is excited to see the layers and said nice looking shirt on that nice looking transfer. Is that other one? Yeah, I wish I put it on straight. It is a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, you know what? Like, I'm sure there's so many people out there that do it. I'm not the only one. And if you don't want to admit it, it's fine. <laughs> I usually always have to get like a second pair of eyes to look at a design before I press just to make sure. It always seems to be just slightly crooked. But I could always use a t-shirt ruler. That would have helped me. I don't have any in the studio. All right, make sure I got all these inside pieces. This one, okay. All right, and now I'm gonna put that over there so it doesn't get my pieces on it. And then we're gonna peel this one off. I always forget to make the, the box around. Oh yeah. It's made it so much easier. It definitely does. Especially when you're working with like a big, a larger design, mm -hmm. it really does make it helpful. All right, I'm gonna pop out all these middle pieces. Okay, and now I just gotta trim it off. So, and so this one is gonna be layered. We're gonna do that first initial tack layer of the green just to kind of get it in place. If I left it on for the full time, for the vinyl, what'll happen is it'll shrink my vinyl. So you definitely don't wanna do that, especially since we're gonna be layering. I wanna make sure that the two layers line up where I want them and that the kind of the words line up properly. So we're just gonna tack for a few seconds of this green onto our shirt. Is the brick vinyl textured? It is not textured, it is completely smooth. Um, yeah, it's completely smooth and kind of um, feels like silicone a little bit. 
I want to say. It has like a rubbery sort of texture to it. Or not, not texture, a rubbery feel. <laughs> I don't want to say texture because it's not textured. It's totally smooth. Okay. Let's get this one on there. I'm going to use my pressing pillow for this one because I am, I have my seams. I don't know if you can see it there, but I do have my, my seams. This is a smaller shirt. So the seam of my sleeve is there and I really don't want that to impact my vinyl and how it sticks. So I am going to use my pressing pillow. And since I'm using my pressing pillow, I'm going to have to lessen my pressure to accommodate for the pillow. Too much. I feel like I'm going to go all the way here. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Okay. I hope I'm going the right way. <laughs> okay, that's better. All right, especially when you're doing a, you know, a youth shirt or whatever, you don't want those seams to impact your design or get in the way. So using that pressing pillow pushes these seams down into the pad or into the pillow. So that way you have a nice smooth, even pressing surface, which is exactly what you want for, um, for vinyl. All right, and we're gonna go right here in the middle. That looks good. All right, and again, tack it down just for a few seconds. Oh, I wrinkled a little. My pressing pillow is not totally flat. Kate, can you give me that? This has just been a day today. Yeah. My pressing pillow had like these indentions in it. It wasn't giving me an accurate press, which happens. You use pressing pillows often enough with a certain product, like let's say coasters or a, piece, a tile or whatever you might need a pressing pillow for. If you press and press and press over and over again, Oh, thank you. It, it could potentially imprint into your pillow and give you like an impression. So that had an impression. I didn't think it was going to matter, but it did on my, there we go. It did on my E and my R of the, of the soccer. Okay. So now we're good. This is all tacked down, ready to go. And I'm going to take my soccer brick vinyl and place it right on top where I want it. That looks good as well. Cover with that nonstick sheet. And we're gonna go ahead and tack this down for the full time to get that brick in place. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do the backside just to make sure that brick is set and good to go. All right, any questions so far? Does uh, the brick have more of a matte or a gloss finish? This definitely has a matte finish. It's not glossy at all. Um, oh, that was much faster than I expected. <laughs> okay, don't peel. I want to, I always want to, but that's what it is so far. We're gonna wait, I'm gonna patiently wait, and I'm gonna tack the other side. So you wait until it cools and then tack? Yeah, I'm gonna wait this time because like, I did it the other way and I wound up repressing, so I'm gonna let this one cool and then I'm gonna flip it over and, and tack it down. I guess you can do it either way, just to make sure that the brick is like on there. If you're using something like a Cricut Easy Press, what temperature would you recommend? I think Caesar recommends you go up five to 10 degrees when you, when you press their vinyl with the Easy Press. So we're at 320 right now for 20 seconds. So I would up that to you know 325, 330 mark. Okay, I think I'm okay. The vinyl's like, I'm not cool. You didn't wait, but it's good. 
All right. Oh, that looks so good. All right. Let's just tack it from the back side. Just a few seconds. I just want to make sure we're good. Okay. And then I'll show you both projects here. Voila. Excellent. So hopefully you can kind of see, I don't know if you can kind of see the dimension. If I put it like that, but it really does help like in person when you're looking at it, it really does help those letters sort of stand out. You can feel the difference and you can like see that three dimensional quality of, of the vinyl itself. So now you have two shirts created with brick and you know, they're definitely here. I'll hold this one up so you can kind of see it. Super fun, easy design, you know, perfect shirt. And there you go. So, you know, if you haven't already tried brick vinyl or sort of hesitant to try it or not sure what it, what it'll look like or feel like, you know, definitely a, a high quality, um, vinyl really gives you that accent that you're looking for. And it really makes your shirt look very unique. All right. So we have any more questions. All right, great. Well, thank you all so very much for watching and we will see you here in two weeks. Bye everybody.